section of the vlog. I am organising my wardrobe today and helping you organise yours. Sharing everything that I do to organise a wardrobe. And I do actually believe that there isn't a wardrobe that I can't organise. In an alternate life, I would love to be a wardrobe organiser. So I'm going to do all of mine and share all the tips. Here we go. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to say in terms of organising a wardrobe is the less you have to organise, the easier you are going to make your life. The first step to organising any wardrobe is to declutter it as much as possible. I've got videos on this and if you want a full step-by-step -step guide, you can look at my ebook, which is a simplified wardrobe and that takes you through the entire process of building a year-round capsule wardrobe that suits you and your lifestyle. And I cover decluttering, I cover organising in that as well. So I will leave a link in the description if you want to go and have a look at that. But my biggest, biggest tip is to declutter your wardrobe as much as possible. I asked you on Instagram what your specific wardrobe organising struggles were and so many of you said, I don't have enough space. And what I will say to that is, Space is not the problem. If you don't have enough space, it means that you have too much stuff. So try to reframe that. Like my wardrobe is so, so tiny, but I have plenty of things to wear. I'm not lacking space at all. Unless you're someone who, you know, loves having hundreds and hundreds of clothes and you have a gigantic wardrobe in which case you're probably not really interested in this channel you're not probably not watching it anyway but that's the usual it's not that you don't have enough space it's that you have too much stuff second thing in terms of feeling like you've not got enough space a lot of you said that you really struggle with keeping things that you don't wear keeping sentimental items to that, what I would say is that you have two options. My personal favorite and what helps me declutter the most is if I haven't worn it in the last year, I know the chances of me wearing it in the future are very, very slim. So I like to only keep clothes that I can see myself wearing in the next six to 12 months and be very honest. Be very honest with yourself about that. The other stuff, sentimental, things you may be not sure about, you have two options. So you can either take all that stuff out so you're just left with the things that you wear, love, every single day throughout the year. You can take them out, put them away in a box. This is my personal favourite because if you struggle with hoarding then you are going to reap the rewards of having what feels like shopping in a beautiful boutique um, in front of you whereas if you keep all that stuff which is the other option you you're always going to feel a little bit a little bit lost a little bit confronted by things that maybe used to fit and don't fit anymore or a past personal style or past memories stuff like that but it's your choice the two options, you put everything away in a sentimentals box and you leave it out of sight for six months, forget about it, and then in six months time, open it up, see how you feel about that stuff then. My guess is you'll probably be like, oh, I forgot I even had this. Yeah, this can, this can go. Or maybe you just keep that stuff on the back burner. That's okay. The alternative is to keep everything in the wardrobe all together so you are constantly confronted with have I worn this? Do I love this? Does this fit me? Do I feel great in this? Does it fit my three style keywords? And it's completely up to you which one that you choose. It depends on which one works best for you. I only have things that I love and wear and that are in line with my personal style and it gives me a lot less to organise. The other tip that I will say is to treat the clothes that you have with love and respect. 
So your wardrobe should be a very safe place for those things to live. It shouldn't be rammed with all sorts of other things, you know, ideally in a decluttered, simplified, intentional home, everything should have a home. It should have a place where it belongs. And a wardrobe is where your clothes, underwear, shoes, accessories belong. So prioritize your wardrobe for that space. I struggle with that with mine because I live in a tiny little studio in the centre of Paris and I have to keep my vacuum in there and also my mop in there and my yoga mat as well but I try to designate, so I've just tried to designate like certain areas specifically for, for clothes but in an ideal world you would have your wardrobe solely dedicated to your clothes. And if you are sharing a wardrobe, which I know is another struggle, if you're wanting to be more organized, more minimalist, and the person, the people that you live with maybe aren't in line with your new lifestyle, your newfound values, what I will say is to separate the space out. So have a space that is designated as yours and give the other person their own space, let them do whatever they want with that, Try to forget about that, don't try to organize their stuff or declutter their stuff, that's always a really, really big mistake. Stay focused on your area, what's yours, and making that beautiful and curated in the way that I'm guessing you want because you're watching this video. So when you only have a few things or less things to organize, you can do it in a really beautiful, curated way. And my two favorite ways to do this with wardrobes are to use wooden hangers. I think they are the best hangers to use. Most definitely, please avoid metal hangers. The velvet ones are, they're okay. Plastic ones, they're not very sustainable and I don't think they look, they look very pretty. You can get really cheap, beautiful wooden hangers in wood or white from Ikea if you're on a budget. But I feel like you know, running your fingers along wooden hangers with your favorite clothes on, it feels like you are shopping in a beautiful boutique. And personally, that's how I want getting dressed to feel every single morning. So yes, please use those. They are kinder to your clothes, which means that your clothes will last longer as well as it looking really pretty. And then for the stuff that you can't hang, if you have a set of drawers, great we're talking about more talking more about that in a second but for the other stuff i would suggest storage baskets and again you can make those as pretty and as individual to you and your personal style as you want i like the wicker ones with the material on the inside because i think it they look really nice and they protect the clothes in terms of what to hang versus what to put in storage baskets or drawers you will always, always get more in drawers than you will hanging everything. I've tried, I've experimented with like both over the years and I find that I like my day-to-day -day clothes hung out. I don't have a lot, like I have less than 50 pieces in my entire year-round capsule wardrobe so it works really, really well. I like to see everything hanging as opposed to it being folded away. Where I live right now, and you know, you have to work with what you've got. I've had different setups in the past, but right now, this, this behind me is my current situation. I actually don't have a chest of drawers, which is my ideal. So I have like shelves, but to maximize that space, I'm using storage baskets to create that drawer effect. But yes, if you have a lot, you will always be able to store more in drawers than you will hung up in a wardrobe. In terms of how to hang clothes, and yes, there is definitely a way. Again, it is about respecting and loving and honoring the clothes that you've got. So things like tops and dresses, you can hang in the very traditional way where the hanger is inside the clothes. And I like the wooden hangers again because they have a little bar on the bottom. So for things like jeans and trousers and skirts, you can fold them over. 
it's really important to try to respect the shape and the material of the clothes and to hang them in a way that like feels natural to that piece and pleases you visually as well like don't be afraid to indulge in this and enjoy the experience in terms of sweaters this is a very common issue that people have. They store their sweaters as they would a, um, a t-shirt or a top like this with the hanger inside. That is not the right way to store a sweater. You need to fold it over the little bar of the hanger and this will make it last longer. It means that it won't lose its shape and it is much more sympathetic, empathetic to, to the piece. So that's the, that's the ideal way to store sweaters. Or you can fold them and keep them in drawers. It's up to you, it depends what it is that you are working with. In terms of what should go where, there are various ways to organize. So you can organize by category, you can organize by material, you can organize by size, you can organize by color. I don't think there's any right or wrong. I used to do the Marie Kondo thing where you start with the longest piece on the left and then it goes up as you go over towards the right. That's supposed to be the most like, um, you know, calming, zen, relaxing way to organize things. Personally now, I like to organize by category because this makes sense to me because that's how I like to get dressed in the morning. And that's how purposeful design, intentional design should work. Yes, it should be beautiful, but it also needs to be functional. And it should be functional for you and your lifestyle. And it's about finding the balance between the two. So I like to organize my tops together, my dresses together, my coats together, and then bottoms, trousers together, and sweaters together as well. And then I have underwear together, accessories, I also have mini capsule wardrobes in my big capsule wardrobe. So I like to put my loungewear capsule wardrobe all together and any hobby stuff as well. And then within those categories, what I've done behind me, you'll notice, is I like to organize by color. I'm a very visual person. I really appreciate the colors being organize and again when it comes to getting dressed i know if i want to wear a dress that day and then my brain will go to the place of well which color dress do i want to wear or i want to top today do i want a white top black top or you know something in between so that is the way that i have chosen to do mine but the most important thing is to make a choice yes experiment but try to stick with it try to maintain that rule and think that this is how things are organized. This is my system. I'm going to stick to it. And then you know where everything is at all times. I am not a fan of packaging, you will notice, in my wardrobe or in my house full stop. I feel like packaging adds bulk to items. I think it's not necessary. The only packaging that I've left in my wardrobe is the shoebox that my boots came in because I feel like this is the most caring way to store my boots where they are laid flat i think having them stood up i don't know it just doesn't it just doesn't feel quite right maybe without some boot insert so i have kept that shoe box but other than that i would avoid shoe boxes i would have everything out try not to store anything on top of one another i think the more breathing space a piece has the more you can appreciate it the more that you can see it um, if you really struggle with storage space in terms of shoes you can always have the over the you know over the door thing and then you and then you slot them slot them in there but i like to have them flat on the floor which is where i feel like they just naturally belong in terms of folding, I used to be super obsessed with the Marie Kondo method and I used to have everything folded like that at all times. It got to the point where it didn't really feel fun anymore and it felt quite constrictive. So I don't do it religiously anymore, but it is still the method that I turn to. So what I do is I like to, when I am storing things in drawers, I like to store them where the materials complement one another. So knitwears together, silks together, that kind of thing. It just, it feels, 
nicer and I do always aim for that little rectangle that she advises. I will leave a link for you to how to fold Marie Kondo style which is the personal method that I use but I always aim for that little rectangle that will stand up and then I stack everything because if you store things vertically you maximize the space and you can get a lot more in a very tiny space. Hopefully that helped. If you have any questions specific to organizing your wardrobe, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think of this door. I'm not very happy with them in terms of they just feel very bland. I have something up my sleeve. I will quickly show you. I have some, I have some self-adhesive paper to try on the wardrobe doors to give like a rattan effect. And I think, I don't know, I think that's going to look, I think it's going to look really, really nice. So, um, but yes, there will probably be a little interiors vlog update coming very soon. But hopefully that's helped you with your wardrobe organising dilemmas. I really hope that it has. And if you have any questions, ask away in the comments and I will try to answer as best as possible. I've been doing this for years. I'm absolutely obsessed with it always full of ideas and i um, very happy to help. But yeah, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think and I will see you soon.